nice when everything's fine And life feels like smiles and sunshine But every now and then There's a bumpy road ahead and Things might not feel quite so good Well it's fine to be scared sometimes It's okay if you can't be brave Speak up and say I don't feel okay We all need help sometimes everyone it's so nice to be able to talk to you directly finally after all this time so if you haven't guessed already my name is Helen and I am the author of the book we're launching this evening and the book is called Elvis in just a minute my friend Stephen's going to read the book so I'm really really excited for you all to listen to that so it's really Christmassy out at the moment isn't it and everything looks really pretty this time of year and I think we're all quite excited about the big day aren't we but I think it's really important to say that for the people that I work with and for people in Elvis's position Christmas can be a really difficult time and I really wanted to make clear that Elvis does have a hard time in my story he does get very sad for a little while and he does find himself with nowhere to live but I want you to hang on in there and keep listening because somebody steps in to help him and she changes everything so after we've listened to the story Another friend of mine, Jason, who a lot of Bath-based children and parents will know through Super Pirates, is going to take us on an elf adventure workout that he's planned especially for tonight. Anyone that knows Jason already will know that we are guaranteed to have a great time and I'm really, really looking forward to that. So parents, grandparents, carers, anyone else that's watching this evening, the book is now on sale. It's available in the bookshops that you see on your screen right now and it's also available to order online at helenbryan.co.uk. All profits from the sales of Elvis will go directly to two charities, Julian House and St Mungo's, both who specialise in helping people in Elvis's position. And I'm enormously proud to be supporting both of them with this project. So I'm going to hand you over to Stephen Kinman now that I'm really excited about. Lots of you will know him because he is he plays Robert the Robot in CVV's Justin's House. He's also the voice of Fireman Sam. He's an incredible actor and I am so privileged to have him reading my book. Without further ado, Meet Elvis. Written by me, Helen Bryan, and illustrated by the incredible Chantal Bourgogne. Elvis. Written by Helen May Bryan. Illustrated 
by Chantal Bagogne. Published by P. Hen Publishing. Meet Elvis. Elvis is friendly, and Elvis is large. He loved his job at the local garage. He worked with his friends, Ringo and Paul. He was happy-go-lucky, no worries at all. Now Elvis had always lived in his town. He was known as the best mechanic around. He was cheerful, funny and super strong. He could even pull broken cars along. Then one day, everything changed. The boss, Mick, arrived with his wife, Charmaine. I'm sorry, boys. We're moving away. You've all lost your jobs and must leave today. Elvis was worried. What would he do? He worked at the garage but lived there too. He loved his job. He liked his home. He was scared and felt completely alone. Ringo and Paul were also sad. With no room at their house, they felt really bad. Oh, Elvis, they said. Where will you go? I'll be all right, boys. I'm tough, you know. The next day, Elvis emptied his flat. He picked up his bags and said, Well, that's that. As he left the garage and walked down the lane, he wondered if he'd ever be happy again. Elvis walked until it got dark. Once he was tired, he sat in the park. As it started to rain, he started to cry. But no one noticed. They all walked on by. Nobody realised it was Elvis sat there. He could have been anyone. They just didn't care. Then all of a sudden, someone sat down, and Elvis slowly turned around. Hello, said a voice. I'm Sella. What's wrong? I'm fine, sniffed Elvis. I'm big and I'm strong. I can see that, said Scylla, and it's good to be proud. But I'd like to help you. Would that be allowed? With a deep breath, Elvis started to chat. He explained the garage and his lovely old flat. When Elvis had finished, Scylla looked at her feet, and with tears in her eyes, she started to speak. Listen, Elvis, I want you to know that I too lost my home not long ago. I slept in this park right where we are. I used to lie on this bench and stare up at the stars. When you lose your job, your flat, your home, it's lonely and scary being here on your own. Someone helped me, and now I can help you. I do understand what you're going through. I stay in the shelter now on the main road. They help people like us who have nowhere to go. Come back with me. They'd love you to stay. There's food, a warm bed and games we can play. Elvis was nervous. He still wasn't sure as Scylla led him up to a green door. As the door creaked open and he walked inside, he felt so small but was too big to hide. His trunk was shaking. His tummy felt tight. But the shelter was lovely. It was friendly and bright. Welcome, Elvis. Don't worry. We'd love you to stay. Come and sit down. You've had a long day. His omelette for dinner was tasty and warm. After he'd eaten, he started to yawn. Elvis was tired and got into bed. Thank goodness for Scylla, he thought in his head. And there we will leave him, safe and sound. How lucky that kindness and help were around. 
I want you to know that Elvis was fine. He'll get back on his feet all in good time. He doesn't know yet, but things will get better, starting with the arrival of a special letter. Dear Elvis, I hope you are well. I wanted to meet you. My name is Miguel. I've just bought a garage and moved to the town and I've heard you're the best mechanic around. I would love you to come and work for me. Could we meet? Yours sincerely, The End I really hope you enjoyed the story. Let me know what you think. What does Elvis mean for you? Who was your favourite character? What was your favourite bit? Send me comments, messages. I'll reply to as many as I can. I'd love to know what you all thought. So I thought at this point I'd tell you a little bit more about why I created Elvis and how it all came about. So on New Year's Eve last year, I was sat at home with my husband and my son, who's four, and all of a sudden, just like somebody introduced me to him, Elvis popped into my head and I could see everything. I could see what he looked like, what he sounded like, what he was wearing, and also what happened to him. I could also see Scylla and how she came to help. So for the first time in 18 years, I ran upstairs and I wrote a book draft on my laptop. The reason I wrote Elvis and the reason that I published it is because I think Elvis and Scylla have got a really, really important job to do. So what they represent is the fact that anyone can fall on hard times. Homelessness can happen to lots of people, but there were two really important things I wanted people to understand from the book. Firstly, that behind every single homeless person that we see, there is a personal story and they are all individuals and nobody should ever be judged for the circumstances that they're in. And secondly, I wanted Scylla to show you what amazing things can happen if we stop and take the time to be kind to somebody. I've worked with some really amazing people in my career during my time as a homeless outreach worker, a prison resettlement worker, and in the job I do now on a hospital ward for St Mungo's. And Elvis is for every single one of those people. So a little while ago, um, when I was looking for sponsorship and support for the campaign to fund the publication of Elvis, Julian House suggested that I contact somebody called Jason from Super Pirates in Bath. Fast forward, uh, a few weeks later, we were on the phone and not only did he become a really generous supporter financially of the project, but he also offered to do some fun stuff for us for the book launch. Anyone that's not encountered Jason before, you are missing a trick. He is absolutely amazing. He's one of the best... Uh, children's activity coordinators and entertainers I've ever encountered. Um, and I'm really proud to say that he's put together, especially for us this evening, a really festive Christmassy elf adventure workout. So without further ado, let me hand over to him. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you're prepared to work hard because he jumps around and does all sorts of stuff all over the place. And I will see you again afterwards. Enjoy. <laughs> Wait, who are you? It broke, it didn't work. It... Oh. Operation Log 152. Teleportation device has apparently not taken me to the North Pole, but instead to, where are we? Undertaking systems check. <laughs> Location, England. DNA sequencer. Oh, oh. Good. Flux capacitor, good. Christmas spirit, low. Aha, uh -huh, that's it. It appears that we've run out of Christmas spirit. Not enough fuel to get us home. I'll see to it. Okay, what's the matter? You're acting like you've never seen a real life elf before. What's up? Not what you expected. Not quite so lumpy dumpy 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 do. I fart rainbows. <sighs> Listen, since you're here, I'm gonna need your help. You see, my teleporter is powered with the Christmas spirit. 
And we didn't have enough to get all the way home. We need some more. We need to get more Christmas spirit. Can you help? Look, between me and you, if you can help, then I'll put you on the nice list, okay? If you can help. And uh, maybe, <laughs> would you? Okay, I'm just gonna leave this here. Okay, you can just, if you wanna have a look at it, just have a look, just saying. <laughs> okay, it's settled. You're gonna help, you're gonna help me get back home. Let's head into town. Go play, be nice, blah, 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 blah. Feel the Christmas spirit and I can get back to the workshop. So let's start by enjoying some ice skating. <laughs> wow. Yes, I do magic. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, are you ready? Head into town, let's go. Whoa. Why don't we test some of your reindeer knowledge. Dasher, the fastest. Dancer, loves to dance. Prancer, very loyal. Vixen, the show off, does magic. Comet, totally chill. Cupid, loves an mince pie and snuggles. Donda, Dutch for thunder. Always shouting. Blitzen, lightning, very flashy. And then there's Rudolph. Red nose, guides the sleigh and gets all the credit. Kapow! Great job. I know what you're thinking. Teleporter? Well, yes. Look, when I first started being an elf, a Super Nintendo with 16 bits was all the rage. Now it's an Xbox Series X, 12 teraflops. What I'm saying is that things have moved on. We've come a long way and teleporting is a thing. Elves teleport. Elves are very clever. Okay. But we need more Christmas cheer. How about a disco? Are you ready to boogie? Okay. <laughs> Best dance moves. Go! Dance in the turkey. Do the turkey. That's it. Do the turkey. Do the baby Jesus. Dance the baby Jesus. You know you like to move. Wrap in the presents. Wrap up the presents. Yeah. Whoa. What are you getting? I don't know. It's a surprise. Whoa. Boom. Good job. That is the spirit. And you are amazing. Look, an old lady needs help with her shopping. How about we help? That would be kind. Kindness is in the Christmas spirit code. Madam, may we help? <laughs> oh, lovely. All bought from local independent shops. Fantastic. Okay, take it and lunge it into the car. Good job. Oh, kindness. It's the number one rule of awesome, really. Oh, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and be kind to the planet. Oh, there's just so many ways to be kind. And also, so much time. Oh, you can be kind now. You can be kind tomorrow. You can be kind next week. You can be kind forever. Oh, wow, Yorkshire puddings? Oh, yummy. Bosh. Good job. Oh. Who the frosted snowbells threw that? Great idea. Everyone knows that a snowball fight brings Christmas cheer. Come on, make your snowballs and let's have a battle. But just remember, I'm an elf. I'm pretty good at snowball fights. If I hit you in the face a bazillion times, don't go crying to mama. Okay, come on. Okay. <laughs> go! Social distance this. Good job. Keep going. 360 no scope. Keep going. Need more snowballs. 
Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Yes. Holy meatballs. You are good. Not far to go. I've got an idea. How about we go sledging? That's cheerful. Oh. The problem is the slope. It's not sledgeable. It's full of rubbish. Oh, that's someone's job to tidy up. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Great idea! Come on, here's your bin bag! Whoa! Let's tidy it up! Yes, we didn't make this mess, but we can tidy it up. You see, part of the Christmas spirit is doing more than what's expected of you. You know, you can take responsibility for things that aren't your fault. And you can fix things that you didn't break. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. We are smashing it. Time for some sledging. Okay. Calculating wind speed, gradient, appropriate velocity. Well, what? Of course I'm going to do it properly. I'm an elf. I do sledging. This is what I do. Come on. Okay. I'll race you. I'll race you. Ready. <laughs> Feel the rhythm. Feel the rhyme. Get on up. It's sledging time. Shwow. <laughs> Here we go. Yes. Wow. Cool runnings. Okay. Okay. Yes. It's every elf's favorite film. Whoa. Fast as a penguin. Keep your bum tight. Keep your feet up. Keep your elbows up. For mega speed. Over the jump. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Almost at the bottom. Yeah. Okay. One last jump. Whoa. So, this is it. This is your town. How very nice. Although, <laughs> I'm sorry, but your Christmas tree looks terrible. It doesn't even have a star at the top. The ball balls are all in the wrong order and the tinsel, well, that just looks like a baby threw it on there. So let's climb up, let's fix all the decorations and even crown it with a beautiful star. Yes, I have a star. Okay, come on, let's get on up there. A Douglas fir tree. Wow, splendid, good choice. Oh, you know, according to the Guinness World Records, the tallest one in the world is 221 foot tall. Pow, that's like 221 foot. Okay, ball balls, lovely, lovely tinsel. Come on, keep going. A bit more tinsel, ball balls, and the star. Slide down the tinsel. Yeah. Look, it's Julian House. Now, if there's one place we are sure to fill up with some Christmas spirit, this is it. You see, Julian House helped the homeless, and that's one of the most Christmassy spirited things that you could ever do. You know what really grinds my sprouts? It's people not having enough food to eat. Here, let's help empty the food truck. <laughs> look left, look right, stop, look and listen. Okay, okay, let's empty it. Julian House helps provide shelter and food for the homeless, as well as lots of other help. I mean, imagine being homeless. If you don't have a house, then what you really need is a friend. And Julian House acts as that friend to homeless people. And we can be that friend too. Nailed it. Sometimes all it takes is a quick hello. Oh, we've got all the Christmas spirit that we need. I'll be back in the workshop faster than Father Christmas can munch a mince pie. Wow. You know what? Why don't I leave some of the Christmas spirit at Julian's house? They need it more than I do. 
I'll keep enough to get to Svalbard and, and from there, Rudolf can pick me up. After all, I'm just making toys. These guys, they're helping people who need it most. We all need a little help sometimes. Until next time. Wait a minute. The Christmas spirit, it's full again. Of course, everyone knows that the more Christmas spirit you give, the more you get. That's the magical thing about the Christmas spirit. The more you give, the more you get. Father Christmas, <laughs> warm up those mince pies, I'm coming home. Until next time, stay awesome everybody. And Merry Christmas. Yeah! I did warn you, didn't I? I hope you all enjoyed that. I did say that he'd work you hard. For anyone that's interested in finding out more about Super Pirates, they are an amazing company. Um, please look at the website that's on the screen now um, and contact Jason and he'll be able to help you. Jason, you're a star. Thank you so much for that. As you can imagine, Elvis wouldn't have happened without the support of lots of people. So now I'm really pleased to say we've got a short film featuring some of the main supporters of the project and I really, really hope you enjoy it. You'll also hear a little bit more about the two charities that I'm supporting with Elvis. So let me introduce Jason from Super Pirates, Paul Hudson, one of my managers from St Mungo's, Cecil from Julian House, Rachel from Curo, Kerry Howard, Chantel, my illustrator, and Carly Collette from Peahem Publishing. I really hope you enjoy it. Helen emailed, I think, back in February, just saying she'd heard about Peahen and could I have a look at her story? And I don't think there was much else around it other than just look at the story. And I remember reading it and just thinking, wow i don't know i've been publishing books for 15 odd years and it was refreshing it was kind of emotional kind of it was just so beautiful and i thought well yeah it's amazing um helen contacted me during lockdown um way back in the summer and um she spoke to me about this lovely book she's written uh, about elvis who was a car mechanic elephant car mechanic, which I thought that made my ears prick up immediately. I thought, <laughs> that sounds like fun. But then the sad thing happened, he lost his job and his home. And um, she then continued to tell me about how her involvement with Julian House and the charity and, and the shelter and how they help homeless people. And um, I thought, this is interesting. This is really interesting. It's not only is it a good story, but it's actually trying to do something good for the people out there. But yeah, we started working on it in June and quite a journey, quite a very much collaboration. Um, and again, I kind of got that impression from Helen. That's what it would be. That's what I was all in for doing. And just the passion of Helen driving the book as well was just so amazing. And it was never about, I want this to be a number one bestseller in Waterstones, it was really about the cause and about homelessness and raising awareness. And again, that was just like, yeah, we have to work on this. My name is Cecil Weir and I'm the fundraising and PR director for Julian House. Although we are best known as a homeless organisation, in fact, our services are much broader. Uh, we're the main provider of uh, support for domestic abuse victims in Bath and North East Somerset. We also do quite a lot of work around uh, uh, prison resettlement and also we have the supported accommodation for uh, autism and Asperger's sufferers in, in Bath. So for me, Julian House um, is a very dear charity um, because I actually got introduced to the charity when I needed help personally. I was validated, I, I felt human. There was all different women from all different backgrounds and we all had a common um, history. And, and that was amazing and it was free and they had a crash and I had a very young baby at that time and it just gave me two hours of clarity and community. Many of the services that we provide uh, run at a deficit and that means that we have to uh, underpin those, or, uh, those shortfalls from our own resources. That's why we do our own fundraising efforts and so this money will help to do that. But the other thing that we try and do, we try and 
constantly look for other ways that we can look after our clients, provide different services, other services, uh, all with the purpose of really moving them away from the very difficult position they find themselves, whether that being homeless, a uh, victim of domestic abuse. Helen came along and uh, offered this. It was fantastic because it was new, it was different. Not only would it raise awareness, but it would also raise funds which we can use really purposefully for our clients. So for instance, uh, our domestic abuse um, victims, we uh, provide advice and guidance, we accommodate them, uh, but when, they move them, when we move them on, often they have very, very little uh, possessions. So where we can, we'll try and support them to get them into new properties. And indeed, only recently, we had a client moving on and they were moving into a completely empty flat. And great that they got accommodation, but actually it's pretty soul destroying to walk into an empty flat and have nothing. So we try our best. So that's the sort of thing that we'll use this money for. Julian House are doing a wonderful thing, looking out for the rough sleepers of Bath over the years. I feel from my personal experience that it's a growing uh, problem um, in, in Bath. So it's important that everyone is being looked out for. And Julian House are clearly cheerleaders for those in the most need. My name is Paul Hudson. Um, I'm a regional head within St Mungo's. Um, I'm based in the southwest of England and I cover Bath um, and Bristol. So this is St Mungo's 50th year of being in existence. Um, we started as an organisation, uh, very small, couple of guys running around West London um, and providing support to street homeless people. Since then, um, we have now grown to the point where I think I've got some figures here. We've got around um, three and a half, uh, 3,150 um, people each night get a bed with some mungos. I mean, that's 3,000 people every night. So if you think about that, that is a big number of people. We're a recovery focused organization. We work with clients. You know, we're, we're not overly prescriptive in how we do things. We, we really listen to people. We listen to client stories. Um, we were really instrumental in developing psychologically informed practice and, and psychologically informed thinking around how we support our clients, understanding the reasons why people behave in the way that they behave, understanding the trauma that most of the people have gone through that end up being homeless, um, and understanding the impact of homelessness. Actually, it's not just about losing a home, it's actually everything that, that goes along with. So your relationships, your family, these things that break down. Hello, my name's Rachel and I'm Communications Manager at Curo. At Curo, we love supporting community projects. So when Helen got in touch about her fundraising book for Julian House, we were just delighted to get involved. Helen's passion for raising awareness about homelessness with our younger generation is inspiring. And I know that she works um, professionally helping people every day who find themselves homeless. This book is about an elephant called Elvis who sadly finds himself homeless. It's about the support and friendship and kindness he receives to get himself back on his feet. It's a book that we love and we think that children of all ages will love it too. So. It was really enjoyable designing them to begin with. First of all, because they were a bit wacky to begin with, you know, an elephant car mechanic, and he had these um, other car mechanic monkeys who were naughty and mischievous. There's alligators, there's um, a fox, a lovely little uh, fox. Uh, there's a penguin, there's a giraffe, there's all, there's so much a variety of characters going on, which for me as an illustrator is of course a brilliant thing. So, so I, love, I love the fact that Elvis was literally so big that he had nowhere to hide. He is, he is literally, literally, he's literally and figuratively the elephant in the room. I, I love the fact that in, that in this story, things will get better for Elvis, but he doesn't know how. And actually even by the end of the book, none of us know how, but we're left with this idea he's been offered a job and that things are going to get better for him. And I think that's so, such a powerful message to share with children because so, often in life you just have to have faith and you have to to trust that if you keep moving forwards then the opportunities will will be there for you. I think it will help them gain some understanding that you might be in a safe wonderful environment but bad things do happen but also bad things can get solved so it's not only about how this sad situation happens it's also about how things can turn around with the help of other people. I think 
people can expect so don't be alarmed that it's about being homeless or about an elephant becoming homeless. Just expect it to be a very gentle read about how someone can lose their home. And it's really good for young children to hear a story like that. And also it's full of hope. It's about charity. It's about community. It's about if we all rally together, then we can actually help each other. And it's just about looking out instead of staying inside and just looking after yourself. It's just a brilliant story and then it's got so much more. And it's, I think it's all of that, it's the added bits in there. It's beautiful artwork, it's just the rhyming text, just how it flows. And it almost feels like a classic story already. So I think it's something that parents and children will just keep going back to time and time again. What we love about Helen's book is the way that it raises awareness in a gentle way to a younger audience so that they can learn about homelessness and relate to it and show empathy towards others. This book I think is actually brilliant because especially in Bath, well in any city, you know, I, I walk into the streets with my kids um, to go to school or, or just go into town and there's always a homeless person there. And I always give um, my eldest some money to give to the homeless person and we always talk to that person, say hi, and because if you don't teach children early on to smile at people, no matter if they're sat on the floor or walking past, then they're going to grow up like that because they've been trained to not rec like give anyone any kind of recognition. Um, yeah, for me, Elvis represents a real opportunity for children to, to understand more empathetically what homelessness is all about. I don't feel that there are enough tools out there to help children see homeless people as one of a whole rather than the, the, the other. And you've created a wonderful tool here that, that children can, can literally hold in their hands that will help them understand that homeless people are people that have fallen through the cracks, that they're on a journey, that they were, that they are, other, that they are real people um, that have had hard times, but can also bounce back from those times if they're given the support of society. I feel like it's a real tool to to help encourage and champion kindness in children. And that to me, you know, that going back to our mission at Super Pirates about championing children to be the most totally awesome versions of themselves. When I see a tool that can help children be more kind, be more courageous, be more empathetic, I want to get behind that 100%. One of the constant challenges we face is raising awareness about the issues that affect uh, all of our clients. Um, for instance, homelessness is not a fashionable cause and there are a lot of urban myths and misconceptions around it. And over the years, ourselves and other organisations, we've been really uh, trying really hard to uh, educate the wider world. And, and, and that has worked and we've seen the benefits of that. But there's still quite a long way to go. And so when this uh, project came along, which is really quite novel for us, it was just a, a fantastic opportunity it's not about, of course, it's not about trying to educate small children, but it's about the parents reading the book. It's about the book being discussed. It's about people thinking about homelessness really from a different angle. And that's, um, that's a real boost to us because um, people easily pigeonhole our clients. They see, they see them on the streets and, and some of them will think certain things which are incorrect. And what we want to do is stimulate discussion, hope that they'll reach out, find out more, and just uh, just raise the bar in terms of understanding. And uh, this is just such an, an amazing project. We were really pleased to be part of it. And I think, especially if the parents engage with the children, and I'm really hoping that the book will encourage discussion, that it's not just reading at bedtime, go to sleep, but reading and, and talking about it. And I think that's how it's going to be most effective. And I think the way it's written, encourages talking about it and I think that for me is the key to really help that level of understanding. I just want to say a couple more thank yous or one big one to be honest because when I started this and had the idea for Elvis nearly this time last year I could never have dreamt that it would go this far 
or be as successful as it seems to be at the moment. I couldn't have done it on my own. This is this whole thing is not just about me. As I said earlier, it's about the people that we work with, the people that the charities support and all the sponsors and supporters that have got involved in this. This is everyone's success, not just mine. And thank you again very much. Just a reminder, you can buy the book at helenbryan.co.uk or the book shops that are on the screen right now. Thank you to everyone that's watched this evening. I really, really hope you've enjoyed everything. And finally, when I realised there was going to be an audio book of Elvis and I needed music, there was only one person in my mind that would be the right one to write something um, and interpret Elvis's story musically in the most beautiful way. That person is a really good friend of mine, Sam Eason. He is astoundingly talented. He's a brilliant singer-songwriter. I say it in every interview, he has no idea how talented he is. And now I'm in going to introduce him singing his song, We All Need Help Sometimes. Thank Thank you very much and bye. Hi, um, my name is Sam Eason. Um, I'm here today because I want to talk to you a bit about uh, a project I've been involved with, um, which is the release of a children's book called Elvis by Helen Bryan. Um, I was honoured to be asked to write a song to go with the audio book, and I'm going to play that for you uh, in a moment. Um, you find me here kind of outside sat on a bench in the cold and the dark which is where the lead character Elvis from the story finds himself um, when he falls on some hard times um, and it is cold and it is dark very cold um, I'm lucky enough that I get to go home after this and go to a nice warm house and a nice warm bed but there are lots of other people for whom that's not the option and that's what this book is there to raise awareness of and to support um, all the sales of the book, the profits um, from the book, a cut goes to various charities to support people experiencing homelessness um, and the book itself is just incredible and it's a really beautiful way to explain some of the issues, particularly to, to younger people. Um, I'm really proud of Helen for writing the story, it's beautiful and I appreciate being asked to be involved with it. Um, so I'm going to play you the song in a minute that I wrote inspired by the book and inspired by the story of Elvis. Um, and it's kind of about um, things being able, sort of some of these hard times happening on anyone, no matter who you are, what size you are, what shape you are, what gender you are, um, it can happen to anyone. And that's what this story puts so beautifully, and that's hopefully what I convey in the song. So, um, yeah, if you get the chance, um, it, it would make a lovely Christmas present to someone. Um, but also, just it's, it's a great book. For, for children or anyone of all ages at raising awareness so please um, check the book out go to helenbryan.co.uk um, get those orders in hopefully you'll get it before Christmas um, and as I said it's a, it's a beautiful story uh, very inspiring and all the profits um, or percentage of the profit, profits go to some very worthy causes so thank you for asking me to be involved Helen very proud of you um, and for the rest of you I hope you like this song um, this is called We All Need Help sometimes and I'm very cold so it might not sound very good. Thank you. It's nice when everything's fine and life feels like smiles and sunshine but every now and then there's a bumpy road ahead And things might not feel quite so good It's fine to be scared sometimes It's okay if you can't be brave Speak up and say I don't feel okay We all need help sometimes Or maybe they lost something they had Stop and take the time To listen and be kind All that they might need is a friend Say it's fine to be scared sometimes It's okay if you can't be brave Speak up and say
sometimes. Please go and check it out. Helenbryan.co.uk.